Okay, well who came tonight to be amazed? <laughs> Here's the door. <laughs> uh, look, some, um, thank you, some exhibits you go to really leave uh, a lasting impression, or well, there's something that is the buzz and the talk every night. Um, it was a little bit of a mellow exhibition this year, but uh, let's try and wrap up a two-week experience. It wasn't just about Yirukachina, it was an experience, it was hospitality from Smeg, um, other uh, Lincoln Century, Valtzegel, all of that created a, a terrific two-week tour, and we're going to try and sum it up in about 20 or 30 minutes. So again, we've got to thank these sponsors, because the, the trip wouldn't be as fun, as enjoyable, or even possible. So Lincoln Century's um, one of their products, Valtzegel, we, we really enjoyed going there. And of course, Smeg, where we are tonight. So thank you again for that. So the, um, this is, the slideshow is going to be in order of how the tour took place, just to give you an idea and a taste if you were to come next time. So we started with um, our sponsor up there, Valtzegel, and we jumped on a bus from uh, Frankfurt in Germany and we started to head north. And we went up to um, Warburg and Würzburg, a few places like that. We did some factory tours and stayed at some beautiful little towns. Beverungen was a town that we stayed in for a few nights. We couldn't take any photographs, so you won't see any in the factory or even um, around the facilities, but there's a group shot outside. What you see though, like any factory tour of any sort, is you start to gain an understanding of the company's values, uh, what they do, their ethics, their quality control, the systems they put into place, and just walking through, whether there's a whole factory making one little component, you still get a feel of what they're all about. And that's um, the value you get here. So just because they're making, in this case, wire baskets, uh, and we purchase those as a pull-out pantry or a little uh, pull-out system, but you, you get the feel for um, how much effort they put into satisfying us as designers and in our industry. So they're, they're really um, educational, these um, uh, factory tours that we go on. Uh, a lot of fun to be had as well. This particular hotel, we were staying there a few nights and we didn't realise it, but underneath was a bowling alley. It was an old war bunker that they transferred into a, um, a bowling alley. So. That was a long night, once we realised that. <laughs> that was absolutely terrific. A lot of fun. And of course they take you to small towns nearby just to um, get a flavour of, in this case, uh, Germany. Then the next day we're off to the fair. So Fiera Milano, uh, it cost a lot of money back in 2005, 755 million euro um, to get this up and running. Um, designed by an architect with the most unfortunate surname, but uh, let's say Massimo Milano. <laughs> and uh, it's huge. It is absolutely huge. Uh, the the concourse is a kilometre long, and that's where we you know go off to each hall. Um, it's close to a kilometre long, so 345,000 square metres indoors, and then there's all the outside areas as well. So the fairgrounds itself is very impressive. A little bit daunting the first time you ever go. Uh, this year we already had a look. Um, Smeg, I think your figures were about 380,000 at the time I looked at this. It was 372, so it was up from the previous show anyway. The attendance was really good. And you can see the majority of them are from other nationalities like us. You bump into Australians everywhere. So Europe Kitchen, Europe Kitchens. This is really what we go for. So at a glance, just looking at the show itself. Okay, many of you have been before, um, but it is about big brands, big names, and they're there looking for retailers. And the retailers are coming along looking to align themselves with a supplier of kitchens, a brand or two brands or more. That's what they're there for. Again, many different brands, some that you may recognise. The stands and exhibits themselves are ridiculous. 
um, some of them must spend into the millions just erecting the stands that are only there for several days. But some of the highlights this year, that's probably what you've come along tonight to see, was just to find out what we all saw at the show. Um, just to dot point some of these things, one of the most noticeable things in kitchens and bathrooms were the sinks with no visible drainage holes at all. Nothing, just a little rim or something. Whether they're going to ever be here or whether they pass our certification and standards, <laughs> that's another thing. Um, even that sink there on the, well you can see the one on the left, it's made out of the same product, whether it be a, um, a Decton style tile or uh, a solid surface or a marble, they were all moulded and integrated just with a very small five millimetre rim around the edge where the water would go down. The one on the right hand side, I'll see whether this works. And this is a sink. Wave your hand over that little triangle. I don't know how it works. <laughs> the electrics underneath, you start to look at these things and you take it for granted. You walk past and you wave your hand over and you go, oh, this is really great. But you look at it afterwards and you think, wow, how do they make that work? How does it plug? itself when it goes down. There's a motor under there lifting it up and down. So there's some quite impressive things. Uh, more um, on these notable um, trends that we saw. The integration of handles, <coughs> once again just built into the doors or the draw faces in the, that continuous product. On the left hand side, uh, that sharp angle, that was a powder coated aluminium profile that came up and um, over. Then the next one along, a solid surface uh, like Staron, all built and formed in one hit. And on the right hand side there, just a continuous profile that at a touch of a finger would flick out for you. But it was again a noticeable thing. This was starting two years ago, it was starting to be a trend at Eurocachina, and uh, this year it was quite dominant. You find that with a lot of things. Each show, uh, every second year of course that it's on, there's one or two things that everyone talks about and looks at. Two years later, it's all over the place. Um, so we're there to try and find those couple of things that are going to set um, designers apart. There was a lot of innovation and technology. That same company that had the sink <coughs> going up and down, on the left hand side here you can see the induction cooktops. A little bit further along where there's a water bottle, that's a, an on bench scale. So the more things you put on it, the, the LED light just keeps going up and down. You can see the scales working and the full control panel on there. So the technology is um, pretty incredible. On the right hand side, that was a, an automatic lift that we've been seeing here for years used in different ways. But I think this year, one thing that stood out to me was this origami uh, effect. Now it's funny because the last I suppose several years we've seen in Australia tiles and uh, substrates and products starting to have that three-dimensional origami effect but only in a small scale and that's now blown up so that it's on full scale and this um, angular geometry it was it was quite prominent on a lot of displays no um, exact calculations about it but uh, it was just done almost um, free-handed. Beveled edge profile doors, still there. Thing. You hardly saw a kitchen that when you opened a drawer or a door, it wasn't lit up. Now, do we do that here? Probably only if our clients really demand it or ask for it, but it's not something we do to every kitchen. Um, whereas we can look at this and think, well, why not? Why not include that? It's something that we can take out if they don't want it, but it's a good way of making a premium product to our market as well. So just small LED light profiles. We saw a, a lot of uh, matching cladding, bench tops, ends, fronts. It wasn't the most desirable or you know beautiful thing to look at, but it was still there. Uh, marbles, because they can get quite thin in their granite and marble, um, that was still just fully cladded. 
and of course that photo we saw before with the continuous handle with that entire kitchen made out of the, the solid surface a little bit um, seamless in that product but it's not for everybody shapes and angles there was a lot of this again no rules like the origami where it was just all folded and creased and lines we saw a lot of that this overhead shelving almost like a, a, a beehive honeycomb effect there was probably only two or three of those shelves that sat level and the rest of them were at a little bit of a slight angle so you can see this year they're having a bit of fun Richard, do you remember underneath that bench you had yes I think I've got a photo of that. That's right. Yeah. Actually, I'll just go back for a second. I don't know if this shows it very well in this photo, but on that right hand photo, it's almost a bathroom floor mounted tap for a kitchen. Something I, I know you might have done it before, but I haven't thought about it. But just if you've got your sink toward the end, Instead of having the, the tap coming out of the bench, it's got this beautiful big floor mounted one coming out of it. So, good little idea you might be able to accommodate in a design sometime. I don't know what this um, spoiler was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it, it was a fast kitchen. It was, a, it was just intriguing. I was just looking at it. I've got to take a photo of this. I don't know why it's there. Aerodynamics. Yeah, and again, more intriguing geometry, just underneath of a table. Um, you look at it and, and you sort of say, why, why did they do that? But why not? You know, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you can get that now from appliances online. Just click that. <laughs> so this was, looking at that from a plan view, it was a, it was a table support, like under here. It was just all sorts of angles. And it, it wasn't left there. Each piece was still chamfered off at different angles and just, again, having a bit of fun with it. Had steel supports running through it, so it was strong. Now, something I thought we would see this year, and uh, we did quite a bit, was these repetitive patterns. These ancient patterns, a little bit Turkish, Middle Eastern. Um, whether they were splashback, uh, pressed metals, or in that um, orange and blue and white photo, that was on a little... Um, chest of uh, drawers. It was quite cute looking, slightly round and indented and hand painted, but these repetitive uh, patterns were certainly popular. And uh, where we had beveled edges or mitered joints, they weren't trying to have a sharp or rounded um, finish this year, they were just chamfered off drastically. And I'm sort of putting here miscalculated spaces because if you look at the photo on the left, I don't know how many substrates and heights and finishes there. It's a little bit of a chuck it in and see if it works. Sometimes it didn't work. Um, I don't think it was that beautiful. On the right hand side, you probably can't spot a single pair of doors that match. They're just all different widths. Now we don't probably do that. There's not too many clients I know that I've got who wants an overhead section of cupboards with five or six different size doors. I see they wouldn't allow it. They'd send it back, wouldn't they? So, uh, why, why would they do that? Why? Yeah, good question. I don't know. I wondered whether there was a reason for it. There was no reason. If you open the doors and look behind, there was no ventilation. There was nothing special. It, they just did it. They wouldn't line up with the base cabinets either. No, no, things just weren't lining up. That's right. But um, hey, we took a photo of it and brought it back to Australia. So <laughs> if that was their aim, it worked. It got noticed. But my clients. Yeah, but we still didn't like it. No, <laughs> my clients wouldn't accept it. That's for sure. Um, looking at hundreds of photos of the show, if you looked at them really fast, Grey timber, grey timber. All different tones of timber. Not dark, okay, not dark, but these, again, weathered oaks, um, slight sort of cedar colours, reds, oranges, but there was so much of it. And greys, they weren't light grey, they were deeper greys, a little bit dirty, 
uh, touch of green, hint of that in there. Um, not a lot of charcoal and black this time, but just that mid-range of grey, whether it was on the bench tops and the marble and the stone and onyx, or if it was the, the, the doors. That, that was definitely, in, um, in two words, timber, grey, would sum up Eureka China this year. Why didn't you say that 10 minutes ago? Well, you would have left. <laughs> <laughs> I could have left it to the end. And a grey, uh, again, not too much um, accents of colours. They just use that in accessories and flowers and a few little things like that. There's a lot of green there this year too, just nature. Uh, most of the stands had beautiful trees growing and um, plants everywhere. So, like, like here tonight, it just, no one hates that. You know, everyone looks at nature and it's something like that, and it's beautiful, it's calming. So they had that on their displays, but it wasn't actually in their kitchen designs as such. Um, that was a really good example of some of the typical colour schemes that we saw. Timber again with this amazing clear, thick uh, acrylic on the side, all blended and moulded in. That was in uh, is that, part. Is that shaped into the wood? Is that what I'm saying? Yes. So slabs of timber um, with the bark taken off, and then your Brett might be able to help us out a little bit more with this, but some sort of clear resin of some type, acrylic resin, Just acrylic resin. Into, poured in. Furniture as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We saw this at the Jesse showroom a couple of years ago in Milan. There's this beautiful, probably six or seven meter long slab of timber finished off at each end like that. But this was a student. Um, Salona Satellite is a, within this huge big show that we go to, there was a uh, there's always, sorry, um, a part of the show which is to students. And those students make light fittings, um, furniture, they'll, they'll create a little handle um, for a cupboard and it'll be amazing. And they get scored on it, they get awards for it, it's a big thing. I think the president uh, over there of Italy actually comes and presents the award to the upcoming architect. Architecture in, in Italy is enormous. They've got a massive heritage and history with architecture, so it's well respected. It's actually a winner of students from each country in Europe, so they're from all over Europe. Each one of those that come there. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a really impressive part of the show. It really is. It's beautiful. You get a lot of inspiration from it. Um, and that's actually where that small little Turkish pattern was too. That was just a part of one of the students' uh, exhibits. But these repetitive patterns that we saw, you start to see this in the next dozen slides and while I was over there a lot of the ladies go why do you take photos of shoes okay you start to realize now you see the pattern down the back of that shoe and how it relates to interior fashion and we'll see a little bit more of that look at the colors okay. that on the left they are cooktops and taps in those sort of color schemes you go to some fashion outlet and there's some shoes on the right hand side. Look at the handbags and some doors that we saw at the show. Virtually taken the colour scheme and um, painted it. These are some beautiful lights with a real vibrant metallic sort of finish. And again, shoes. Um, one on the left I think was Versace. And you just see these bright, vibrant, metallic colours coming out. And then at the Eurekachina exhibit, same sort of finishes. So then you'd look at some colours maybe that are coming in again, because you go through these shopping districts and you look at fashion, you think, wow, well, all of these so far, there's not a coincidence that those colours in shoes and handbags and, and suits and patterns you're seeing it you know, in fashion inside of a home because the, a kitchen over there is a fashionable item. So you start to look around and you see these blues a lot more over and over and over. So you know that they're probably going to come back in. I just did a kitchen um, in that blue on the right hand side um, a few months ago actually. Bright, glossy blue curves, not a straight line in it. And you start to think, okay, could come back. I had one of those 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's that's probably the last time that blue in a two-pack deep gloss was a real big thing. So it's doing its cycle, 20 to 30 year cycle. I like those shoes to the left. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, they, they didn't have a 43. Yeah, that's my feet so There's the blue again, the handbags. Um, look at this dress here that we saw in a window in, in Como. And just the blue in there as well, but the other accents, the stripes, the highlights, the contrast, you start to get a little bit of a feel of what could happen. The Armani suit on the right hand side. Now that is starting to be, well, already is, being pressed into tiles and into bench tops. That's almost chevron type of pattern. So, yeah, you know, I sort of found it interesting to, to look at those parts of Europe um, and you know, give the show a miss for a day just to go and see these other things and go shopping. Sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bird trivets again with the, the blade. The blade, was it? Yeah. yeah. And when we did the factory tour uh, with Smeg, we got to go into a laboratory, little room, a couple of us at a time, where they were testing uh, the cooktop. And they were testing it from everything to see whether it was as efficient as it could be against other cooktops. And they do all sorts of um, uh, testing just to see how much or how many kilojoules of power they can get out of something small. Uh, two years ago, anyone who was at Eurocachina would have seen these little birds amongst other characters. They would have seen that there as just a prototype. It was just an idea, a concept to, to get feedback. And this year at the show, there it is on display as a product that you could buy. So it was nice to see um, a company like Smeg, who don't just put something on display and say, what do you think? They listen. And if they get enough feedback and it's popular, they'll put it into production. So we'll get it. So more feedback they can get, the better. You can't see it too well. There's those fridges again, 30,000 euro. Um, the cooktop up in the middle there, that cooktop um, this year was its, their prototype. There was it's sort of a, can you tell us what you think? And it was almost like a large ceramic uh, tile, the surface all textured and coloured, so it was quite nice. You can imagine it being fully integrated with the bench top if it was just sunk down nicely. So whether we get those or not, I'm not sure. Another part of the entire exhibition was the bathrooms, the banyo. So with the bathrooms, um, a lot of open storage. Lots of open storage. What you put in there didn't matter. It was just impressive. <coughs> and curves, shapes, ovals, didn't have to be necessarily square. And there was a lot of interesting use of space. Bottom left, that's a, a bathtub, but in front of the bathtub, instead of just having a boring hob that was tiled, they used a few inches of the space there just to put some towels and a little bit of storage. On the right hand side there, that's just a display of one range of basins in the various ways they use the little space around the back of the basin or the side of the basin but not a single drain hole visible it's all again underneath at the back the water filters through and a lot of integration of basins so the same material on the bench top would be formed out of the hole or into the entire uh, basin three-dimensional stone products this basin on the left hand side that just looks like a piece of cloth. Caddy, do you want to use it already? <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> yeah, really, really beautiful. You have to touch it because you see it and you go, that, that can't be made out of stone, but it is. One chunk of marble, fully moulded and yeah. Is just... that covering the tile too? Yes. So the tiles um, <laughs> have a, <laughs> a look, they look woven as that photo shows and there were maybe about a dozen different tiles that look like that and that just simply planted on the wall like a normal tile but once they were interlocked they look like a complete weave of marble and um, rose gold. That's not $22 a square metre is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 plus GST. <laughs> uh, a lot of different tap finishes, gun metal greys, 
your bronzes, pewters, golds, not just uh, the, the two or three that we're used to. And baths were still popular. There's, the pink one's actually a fabric exterior, all, um, all woven. A little bit unusual, but it, it looked plush. The right hand bottom one, I'd say, was a Russian company. They love their gold and these sort of uh, shapes, like a lightning bolt going through there. And the left hand side, Victorian Albert, with um, a little bit more of a classical style, which is available here. Um, the classic industrial, almost steampunk. Uh, this was a French company, um, these particular photos, but walking up to a tap and turning it on and off, it just, yeah, felt strong and real. <laughs> Amazing. And I thought, in uh, again, we said before, timber and grey was really encapsulating kitchens. To encapsulate bathrooms in one photo, I would say this. The woven 3D, the rose gold, the beautiful, big, glamorous basin, all fully moulded out of one piece of stone, carved. It was incredible. You stand there looking at it and feeling it and touching it. And it's hard to believe it's out of a block of marble this size. Um, beautiful. That one photo, I think, really gives you a taste of what the majority of the show was this year. Milan Design Week. Eureka Cina out at the Row Fairgrounds. That's, that's one exhibit. Back in the city, you've got this entire week of parties events. On the right hand side, all those little dots, they represent an event going on. And that's in that, just that one Brera district, and then you've got all the other districts around. So you could spend the entire week, day and night, trying to see everything, but uh, you won't. And you'll see these flags all through the streets, you'll get maps from everywhere, where to go, what to do. It's real fun. So, uh, you'll walk into displays where it'll be an entire room that's been hired out, and they'll just have light fittings just for the sake of it, just to create an atmosphere, a lot of fun. Little rooms like that, looking at lighting, get a lot of students involved. We um, got to go to the, the Jesse showroom, which many call it the Jesse experience. It's not just a showroom. Um, it's an, an amazing place. They had this fellow uh, who was balancing rocks for us. That's his profession or what he's famous for. So there's all these rocks on the ground, and you'll sit there and you'll actually balance them in front of you. And you'll look at them and you can't understand why they're standing up. But that was the release of Jesse's um, Equilibrio, which is a set of uh, bathroom tapware made from stones. So the handle is a stone, beautiful shaped stone sitting on top of another stone that has the uh, spout coming out through it, really nice. more on the Milan Design Week. There's just parties going on in the streets. Um, Volkswagen on the right hand side, we had an exclusive party. They blocked off the gates and people were walking past, looking in, just trying to get in. But it was all ours. It wasn't meant to be all ours. We were only meant to be there for 15 minutes. And we were there for about three or four hours. They actually wouldn't let us go in the end. We were, we were actually really good for business. Our, our whole, um, we drunk them dry. <laughs> Now, uh, then we tagged onto our, uh, well, I think one of the most exciting parts of the tour was where um, Smeg took over their hospitality and as a host. And we went out uh, again to their, their factories, did some beautiful tours in the Stala. That's um, their headquarters there. It doesn't look like much, but when you go inside, it's like the TARDIS. It's just big. It opens up. It's, it's amazing. We stayed at the Hotel Polly again. We were fed very well. Six kilos too well. <laughs> and uh, they treated us with a, a seminar um, from Deep Design. And Matteo and Raffaella, they gave us a seminar, an in-depth seminar on designing. How they do product design, what they look for. Um, a little bit of insight into their profession. These are just some things that they've developed and designed over the years. If you look on their website, it's just never ending. It's so impressive. So to gain experience and knowledge from people like this, it's invaluable. It's just amazing. It really is. Ask them questions, listen to their experiences. Uh, everything from toothbrushes to hair dryers, chairs, 
I think there's a little JVC video camera there that they've um, designed and created, but there's a story behind everything. And anyone in the design field can sit there and listen to this sort of seminar and absorb it and benefit from it. Really beautiful. And of course, that's the um, small appliance range that they designed for SMEG that we know quite well. So again, a thank you to all the sponsors, um, to everybody that went on the tour. We hope you enjoyed the tour. Anyone who sits there every year thinking, I should do this, I should do this, just do it. You, you won't be sorry, you'll love it. Try and be there. Uh, if you're only just getting into design, or even if you only have a little bit of something to do with the industry but want to know more, uh, you'll benefit, um, no doubt. Talk to someone who's been before. But uh, thank you for your attention. I hope you got something out of that.